Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe Media Encoder scripting tutorial. Now this one is going to be all about the application objects and methods inside of the program. Of course not a lot of people know that you can actually script for Adobe Media Encoder and do some things in batch and communicate between applications. So today we're going to be going over the sort of global Adobe Media Encoder application objects and properties that allow us to do a lot of things and branch out into other aspects of it. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, follow us on GitHub to get updates on when code goes live. And down there as well, follow us on Instagram to get cool updates as well. You can also join the Discord server to get help with plugins, extensions, scripting, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and tons more and join the community. And if you'd like to help support the channel on YouTube and get cool perks at the same time, you can join and become a member, supporter, premium supporter or VIP and get different perks at different levels. So we're basically going to be going over a direct reference to the guide here which you can check out in the description and we're going to be going over what each one of these things I've listed does. You can use these basic properties or methods to begin understanding how scripting and media encoder works as well as use some untested methods to see what they do as well. So we're looking at first in this video the application object all of the attributes and methods that are useful. First, we have the app.launchTime. This is going to give us the number of time in seconds that it took Adobe Media Encoder to launch. Let's say you're working on a project where you need to communicate between, say, Premiere or After Effects and Adobe Media Encoder. Well, in this case, it may be useful to understand how long it takes to launch the program. That way, you can actually wait for that period of time or do some kind of operation after that period of time. So that's a very useful attribute and basically the main one for the application itself. Then we have something called app.get front end. Now the front end is its entirely own object, which you can go in and check out yourself, but essentially it allows us to add items to the render queue, AKA batch. So we can use things like project names, formatting, different presets of the uh, formatting we're gonna use, and this will allow us to basically add and manage all of the batch stuff inside of Adobe Media Encoder. So you can use this and get an object in return. You can just call it like front end, and that will then be equivalent to this front end object, which you can then go into the guide here and check out further. Of course, I'll be making more videos on these other things more specifically in the future, but for now, we're just going over the application objects and methods itself. Next, we have app.getExporter. Similar to the front end, this is going to return an exporter type object. This will allow us to access and modify the render queue itself. So once we've actually added items into the batch processing queue or something like that, whatever you want to refer to it as, you can then use the exporter object to uh, basically manage your items. You can check out how long the queue has been going, you can remove items from the batch, and you can even initiate things like exporting the item itself. Next, we have the get encoder host uh, call, and this will give us an encoder host object, which is its own special thing inside of a media encoder. This, and this allows us to control and query the render queue. So this will allow us to do things like actually initiate the batch run process, will allow us to pause the render, uh, to completely stop the render. We can check if the batch is running. This is a great method I've used a few times to check whether or not something is actually rendering. If it's rendering, maybe you need to wait or run a different operation. So you can check using this. And there's lots of other useful things here that will control the actual actions of Adobe Media Encoder's render queue. And lastly, we have a few more simple and easier to understand uh, methods which will do obvious things. For example, app.quit will quit Adobe Media Encoder itself, of course, when you run within, this, within the program. If you use app.quit for After Effects or in Premiere, it's going to close that application most likely. So make sure, of course, you're referencing Media Encoder. I've skipped a few of these because they're just uh, simple information like getting the build number of Adobe Media Encoder or scheduling a task, which is a little bit more advanced. But what you can do is also say app.cancel task, and this will remove a specific task um, from the queue itself. So you can use a task ID, 
which is just sort of the index down the list that the task is in order to cancel it. If you want to cancel a task, you'll also need to schedule one first, but uh, that, that will basically get you started with the task section. And then two final things which are uh, untested according to the guide. And these are kind of homework for you if you want to go off and test it on your own. Come back and comment on the video and uh, we'll figure out what exactly they are. But we have git watch folder. Does it require an argument? I'm not sure. Unknown parameters and an unknown return. But this maybe will open up something to allow us to get an actual watch folder and maybe detect whether it has different amounts of footage or something like that. And the other untested one is app.wait, which this one may be able to, you may be able to guess, maybe the argument is the number of seconds or milliseconds we want to wait, or maybe it's supposed to wait on a certain condition um, if something is still rendering. So those are two things you can go off and try and figure out on your own as we start to learn and explore Adobe Media Encoder scripting. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub and Instagram to get updates on when code goes live, as well as cool other things. Make sure to join the Discord server and get your questions answered or help others and join a thriving community of scripting, extensions, plugins, and expression people. And of course, be sure to join the channel on YouTube and help support us at the different levels of VIP, premium supporter, supporter, or member and get cool perks as well as help us out. Thanks again for watching everyone. We'll see you next time.